So you want to be a labor and delivery nurse. I love that. Let's start at the beginning. 5.40 a.m. My alarm is going off. I get up, wash my face, get dressed, and start a coffee. Normally I like to be in my car by 6.20. Today I'm obviously running a little bit late, so we've gotta hurry. I need to be in the report room by 6.45 to get my assignment, and it's 25 minutes away, so definitely going to be rushing on this morning. I, can hear your voice. I grab a pair of scrubs out of the machine and then head to the report room. A lot of what I do every day, I can't record. I can't record patient care. I can't record patient care areas in the hospital, but I can tell you about them. So I get to work, I park, I go up and I go to the area where all of the nurses meet in the morning and we get report. We talk about who's in labor, who's in postpartum, who's on our antenatal unit where women that are still pregnant and being monitored, and just overall what the board looks like. We pick our assignment and then we go get report from the shift previous to us. I go over and introduce myself to the patient, get a set of vitals, I sign into Epic, do my first assessment on my patients, and then I run over and grab Starbucks for me and another nurse. I don't get to do that every morning, but it's nice when I can. Sometimes you get to work and there's not time for all of that. Sometimes your patient is nine and a half centimeters and you're kind of giving report over her as everyone's trying to help her. That can be more common than you think. But a normal morning would be maybe getting a patient who is three or four centimeters, was an induction from last night, and then you might be the first admit, meaning you'll get the next patient that comes in through triage. So usually that means you need to have a ready room. I get my other room ready for or if we get a bypass, which is where someone comes in and they are laboring, ready to have a baby. We always wanna have rooms ready so that we aren't running around trying to get everything together if someone were to come in unexpectedly. So I check through the room and make sure all the necessary safety equipment is there, that the warmer is set up and on, and that my cart has everything that I need in it. A big thing is always keeping an eye on your patient's strip while you're in another room to keep an eye on that baby. I like it really sunny in my ready rooms. Bypasses aren't super uncommon where someone comes in fully dilated, fully effaced, ready to have a baby. We try to get them into a labor room. Sometimes they deliver in triage, hopefully not the waiting room, but I'm sure it's happened. Love getting videos of Brogan from the sitter while I'm at work. We ordered Chipotle, which I absolutely love, my favorite food ever, and today I have double labor, so I am kind of dying. Lots of charting, lots of med passing, grabbing my patient who's going natural, a birthing ball and a peanut ball to help her progress. We do a lot of strip charting, depending on if the patient's on Pitocin or has an epidural, and we look for different things like D cells with contractions, and we just overall wanna make sure the baby looks happy while the mom's in labor. Let's say this morning there was an eight o'clock induction and a 10 o'clock induction. If we had a patient already, we maybe would get the 10 o'clock induction. They would get here, I would get them out of the waiting room, bring them back to their labor room, Room, put her in a gown and take her clothes and put them in a bag and then I would start going through consents and I would get her baby on the monitor. I call the doctors to come in and talk with the patient and they usually do a cervical exam. After we know what the cervix is at and kind of where we're going to go with the induction, we can either do a Cytotec or Pitocin and that all just depends on how dilated you are. Once I get the orders in for that, I make sure my patient orders either breakfast or lunch depending on what time it is because a lot of times once we start some of those medications you can't eat anymore and then the rest of my day is spent charting on the strip charting about the patient physical assessments doing intrauterine resuscitation like if a baby is having d-cells flipping the mom starting boluses of fluids putting oxygen on the mom and calling the doctor with any like problems that i can't seem to solve on my own i hope during a shift that i can get a patient to 10 centimeters in time to push because i love doing deliveries if i am the primary nurse i'm the one taking taking care of mama, if I'm the baby catcher, I'm the one drying off and stimming the baby, getting it all suctioned and making sure it's on mom's chest for that golden hour of skin to skin. Deliveries are kind of a blur and very fast, but they're awesome learning experiences. And then some other things I do during the day are going in to help with other going in to help with other nurses' deliveries, catching their babies for them, helping when other patients are having D-cells to kind of like resuscitate the baby and mom, finally giving report, turning in my scrubs, and heading out to my car. I love my job so much and I never realized that I could work somewhere where 13 hours would go by so fast. I usually get home around 8, I change into something comfortable, I make dinner for my family, and I usually drink coffee if I don't work in the morning because by now I am exhausted. Austin.
I truly love what I do and I feel like I'm learning a lot. So that is all I have for you guys. This was a day in the life of a labor and delivery nurse. Let me know in the comments if you are a labor and delivery nurse, if you're an aspiring labor and delivery nurse, if you are in nursing school and thinking about labor and delivery. Um, I knew from my OB clinical, this is what I wanted to do. I definitely am in the right place. I have never felt better in an area of nursing. So I'm very, very thankful to be here. I'm really hoping to hit my goal of a million subscribers this month. If you could subscribe and get me a little bit closer to that goal, that would be so great. Tune in next week to see me single-handedly deliver every baby in for 24 hours. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.